Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today we are looking at the Real Steel Huggin, Hoogan, something along those lines. Uh, really, really nice looking knife. When I first saw this design, it was from Ivan Bregnitz and I, I tend to like his work. And so this one popped for me and I was like, yeah, I really want to check that out. Uh, since that time, I've been able to get my hands on it. I've carried it. I've used it. Um, I've, you know, been able to fidget with it and flick it quite a bit to kind of get a sense for the action. And here we are ready to share some of those reflections. So uh, what we have here is the canvas micarta version. That's a real steel. I mean, that's a White Mountain Knives exclusive, but there are a bunch of different versions of this in various colors of G10. Uh, I think there's also a black bladed version. If you're into that sort of thing, you guys know that I'm not. This one is going to be satin VG10 with um, canvas micarta. Ivan Bregnitz design. Now there's a couple things here that tell me it's, it's Ivan's work. Of course, the maker's mark right over here, but also he has these, uh, you know, proprietary ish slot hardware that he does, uh, which looks kind of cool. And what I like about this is it looks cool. It looks a little bit interesting, but if you just got a slot screwdriver, it works fine with that. The other thing that Ivan pretty consistently does is these long, slim knives, which are very, very attractive. And certainly this is no exception. This is definitely a nice looking knife. Um, and, and I've reviewed a bunch of Ivan stuff. He has a few different knives with real steel. I know, you know, I, I hope he's not watching because <laughs> I, I have not reviewed any of his designs that have been available through uh, the Knife Nuts podcast. That's just because whenever they become available, it's just bad timing for me. I never have money to, you know, extra money to spend on something whenever they come out. So, uh, it's not that I'm purposely avoiding them or anything. It's just the, the stars haven't aligned for me to have one yet, but they all look great. And I've talked to Levon, Levon and they look really, they, you know, he, he says good things. So I'm pretty confident that they're well done. Uh, this knife on the other hand is a little more budget friendly, easy to get my hands on. This did come from white mountain knives. If you want one, they do still have some in stock. Use my discount code sharp stuff. That's a huge help to the channel. In the meantime, go ahead and check out the channel sponsors, um, White Mountain Knives, as well as the others that are listed in the description. That's a huge, huge help to the channel. All right, let's talk, touch on size and weight here. Eight and a quarter inches overall, three and five eighths on the blade length, four and five eighths closed. So that's really nice. It's a little shorter. You know, how many three and a half inch knives have we had on the channel with a five inch handle? So the blade to handle ratio is pretty good here. Um, you've got a pretty compact package. So if you, you know, if you're, com if you're concerned about size and weight, if that's one of the things that is a big deal for you, this could be a really, really good option because you get a good, decent amount of blade. More importantly than that, you get a lot of real estate for your fingers. So if you're someone with bigger hands and, you know, you're trying to find that perfect knife where it's small enough to carry comfortably, but it also has a big enough handle that you can use it with larger hands. This is a really, really nice option. Um, so, and the weight on this guy is only 3.4 ounces. So pretty darn good all the way around. I, you know, I don't have any major complaints about this knife. Um, the, the grip area, if I didn't say so, is a full three and seven eighths inches. So like almost four inches of grip area, which is very, very good. All right. So having gotten that part out of the way, how this carries and, and what, what you're getting in terms of size, let's take a quick look at this very nicely done satin blade VG10 steel. So really, really nice performance, you know, very stainless, decent edge retention. Like VG10 is a great steel. And at this price point, I think these are 80 bucks or so. Um, that is really, really nice to see. Um, you know, you, it used to be, well, I guess not, you know, the, the, the Spyderco Enduras and Indelas and Delicas and whatever else, um, you know, come in at a similar price point or they used to come in at a similar price point with that steel. Uh, but I, I think the steel is totally appropriate for the cost of the knife. We've got a nice little swedge up here, very thin behind the edge. So this is going to slice pretty, whoops, sorry guys, I bumped the tripod. Um, 
So this is a pretty slicey knife for you. The blade stock is about an eighth of an inch thick, so it's not like this big, hefty, crazy blade stock, uh, but it's thick enough to be robust and reliable, but also allows for that nice slicey edge. So very well balanced. And my performance on this, you know, my mileage has been excellent. Uh, so yeah, I... I I, I don't know, guys. I find this a really well-balanced EDC knife all the way around. And the blade, which is sort of our focus right now, is no exception. Like, you know, you're cutting up vegetables, great. You're doing a little bit of carving, great. You're opening packages, great. You know, it, it just really hits a pretty sweet spot for um, overall performance from an EDC style knife. Now, if you want to say, you know, hard use, outdoor, tactical, that kind of thing, you know, I'm, I'm not making that claim. This is more of an EDC style blade and overall knife. All right. Uh, what about the action? The action here is very impressive. So, you know, I can do the old Benchmade stuff with the access lock here. I can roll it open, you know, semi slowly, uh, or you can do the, do a nice little flick with the thumb stud there. The only thing you can't do is you've got this fuller on the blade and, you know, I can sort of, Let's see. I don't, yeah, you really can't get enough of, of the fat of your finger in that fuller to flick the knife open. It's really just there for aesthetics. All right. And, and it looks good and I do like the design and it's very, you know, again, suits, suits Ivan very, very well. This is, this, this is definitely a knife you could look at and go, that looks like an Ivan Bregnitz knife it certainly does. And the blade design, uh, and that fuller go along. Um, one impressive thing here is, you know, I showed you that the, the action is pretty good on this knife. It is not on bearings. To me, that's a welcome change. I feel like every budget knife I review just over and over again, you know, ceramic bearings, ceramic bearings, ceramic bearings. So it's nice to come across a knife, number one, that is not on bearings. It's, it's Teflon against the handle and phosphor bronze against the blade. Um, and the action is very, very impressive here. So, you know, that, that, that makes this a pretty compelling knife as far as I'm concerned. The two notes I would say in terms of the action are, number one, the Omega Springs are a little stiffer than Benchmade Omega Springs. So because of that, I find myself doing this, this two finger thing. Now I do that most of the time with my Benchmades as well, but with a Benchmade, you know, with this, I can't really get away with the single finger unlock. It it works, but it's not comfortable. Uh, two is is much more manageable. Uh, let's see. Here's my my Benchmade Super Freak, and you can see I can easily do the one finger, but I most of the time use two. Um, here, you kind of, at least for me, I need to use two fingers to get this to function properly or or easily, I guess, is the better way to, to put it. Uh, that and the thumb stud, if you're flipping this for, for prolonged periods of time on a car trip or something, uh, I've noticed that the edge starts to feel a little bit sharp. Not not overly, and it's not a huge, huge issue, but I've just something that, uh, you know, on the thousandth flip, you can start to notice a little bit. Um, now the, the trade-off there, you know, having said, talked about the, the tension on those Omega Springs being a little higher, uh, I know I'll get you guys down in the comments saying, yeah, but Kevin, then you're less likely to see the breakage that you get from Benjamin Omega Springs. And I, I think that's a fair point as well. So, um, real steel has kind of gone, you know, in one direction with a stiffer, uh, Omega spring, which is likely a little more robust. Benchmade doesn't tend to do that. Okay. Um, finally, let's talk about this handle a little bit. We've got stainless steel construction, uh, canvas micarta backspacer, canvas micarta on the scales, two screws here in terms of the, the way this is put together. We've got a bent over clip screwed into the butt of the knife there, as well as a little lanyard attachment point. Okay. And the, the liners you can see are just slightly proud of the scales. Uh, that does, you know, add a, a certain amount of contour to the handle in hand. This feels really good. The, the canvas micarta, I'm a huge fan of canvas micarta just because it adds that level of grippiness and there's a bit of jimping. In fact, there's jimping in all the right places here, uh, down the spine onto the handle a little bit under here in that, uh, sort of front finger choil 
overall really nicely done in terms of the ergonomics on this knife i can't complain you know hammer grip saber grip i don't know why but reverse grip uh works pretty well um, so let's go ahead and do a couple of comparisons. I'm not going to bring in the Benchmade. I just only had that there for um, the discussion of the Axis Lock. Kaiser Bag Letter, this is the XL. Uh, I think this is a pretty compelling comparison. Very similar price point. You can see similar materials, similar looks. 154CM versus VG10. Uh, I think that's a, that's a good option you might want to look at if you like something a little bit bigger. Um, I will throw in my pair of two here just for a second, not because I'm, these are, you know, comparable price wise, but everyone's familiar with the pair of two. Uh, you sort of, you know, you want to have that in there to give people uh, a bit of a size comparison. I do have another real steel over here. This is the real steel H six. Great knife from real steel. Excellent performance on this knife as well. Um, this is a really, really budget friendly knife. Probably one of my favorite budget folders ever Savivi Sokoke smaller knife I wish now here would be a great thing you know if they did a, an XL Sokoke that was closer in size to this that would be fantastic uh, but you know there's a great great Savivi um, that uh, very very compelling uh, finally let's let's add one other knife here and you know i've recently reviewed this i don't know if this review is going to come out first or this one but the um canadian knife company sleeper is worth a look you know similar price point you know overseas construction there's a lot of similarity here 14 c 28 n versus vg10 fairly comparable steels um, so that might be something to look at if you think oh kevin this is too big for me i'd like something smaller that might be a good option. There's also another real steel that has an access lock that I believe is, you know, a three inch blade as well. So what are my overall thoughts on this? I mean, it's lightweight, it's capable, it's easy to carry. I think this is a really, really good EDC folder um, for a pretty compelling price point. All right, there you go, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check those channel sponsors. This, as I said, did come from White Mountain Knives. Um, check the other ones as well. If you do go to White Mountain Knives, Sharp Stuff is my discount code. I'll thank you in advance for using that, and we will talk to you soon.